Hello, Planeteers. Uh, my name is Kosnati Kutman Kulu. Uh, just finished my honors in geography at the University of Zuland. I'll be doing my masters for 2015 and 2016 at the University of Manila. Uh, the topic for today is ocean circulation. This is my topic. It's an interesting topic. I hope everyone will enjoy it. Uh, the outline of my topic is as follows. Firstly, I'll have the introduction. I'll describe the vertical profile of the ocean, the ocean currents, the ocean currents and climate, the ocean conveyor belts, the weather systems, ocean precipitation. I'll describe upwelling. I'll also describe the subtropical anticyclones, followed by the Southern Oscillation Index, which is SOI. I'll also describe ENSO, which is the El Nino Southern Oscillation. And then I'll conclude. Uh, what is an ocean? An ocean is a very large expanse of sea, in particular each of the main areas into which the sea is divided geographically. There are names for these uh, divided uh, 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 sea water or oceans geographically as per my definition. So another point that we need to describe is that ocean accounts for the largest part of the planet. As everyone knows that there is more water compared to land. And over the oceans, there's a variety of marine species, and also the ocean circulation and the atmosphere work hand in hand. There is a relationship, it's just that the oceans circulate much more slowly as compared to the atmosphere. It also influences the type of weather and climate that we have, especially over southern Africa. Again, I need to emphasize the definition of what an ocean is. It is a very large expanse of sea. In particular, each of the main areas into which the sea is divided geographically. As you can see this slide, we have uh, on my right the Pacific Ocean. We also have the Indian Ocean, moving on to the Atlantic Ocean, and also the Southern Ocean, and also the Arctic Ocean. So these are the geographically divided areas of the oceans. They are given names, uh, they are clear on the slide. So now, this is the vertical profile of the ocean, when you take an ocean and you slice it into half and you put it sideways, this is, this is what you will see. First of all, you have the mixed layer, uh, and then you have the thermocline, and also you have the deeper layer, which is much more colder compared to the mixed layer. As you can see, the mixed layer is about 100 meters, uh, and then the deeper layer is about 1.2 uh, meters. So, this is what you get when you take. Uh, the ocean is divided into half because it is very difficult to take an ocean and put it in the lab. So we use such models to describe the vertical profile of the ocean. So now moving on to the ocean current. Over southern Africa, we have the Bengala current, which is on my left. And then we also have what we call the Akalas current. But then I need to emphasize another point that uh, uh, researchers emphasize that. There is this debate about having a Mozambique current because some researchers say it is large circular giants that are there over that, that, that region. So there is still a debate whether is it a Mozambique current or do we have large circular giants over a, 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 a Mozambique a China. So now we need to understand that warm ocean currents uh, tend to have warm air over the coast. And then it's also associated with more humid air, a humid climate on the adjoining landmass, like what we have over the eastern side of southern Africa. The weather is more humid and the climate is more humid over the east compared to the west of southern Africa. But when we go to the cold ocean to the cool ocean current, the cool air at the coast, we have cool, cool and dry air, the dry climate on the adjoining mass, for example what we have of the Cape Town, which is the western side of Southern Africa. So we need to describe another concept, which is the ocean conveyor belt. We need to understand that the ocean is not a still body of water. It is not still, it is moving, it is circulating. So there is no constant motion in the, there is no constant motion in the ocean, in the form of the body ocean conveyor belt. There is a constant motion, and this motion is known as the conveyor belt. Uh, and then this motion is caused by a combination of the thermal headline current, the thermal meaning temperature, and headline meaning salinity, the amount of salinity. So, deep ocean, and it is wind driven, 
current on the surface. So we need to understand that the cold salty water is turned and it tends to see when the warm water is less than it remains on the surface. So this is a slide showing the ocean conveyor belt. As you can expect that over Antarctica we have cold and salty air but the current is compared to some parts of the Indian Ocean. So the weather systems, those are the type of weather systems that are associated uh, with oceans and also the atmosphere of uh, Southern Africa. So we have number one, the tropical cyclones, number two, we have cold fronts, number three, we have what we call cattle flows, and then number four, we have north west flood zones, and then we tend to have localized thunderstorms. Uh, this is an image showing precipitation over the ocean. It is expected to have a large precipitation over the equator because of due to conversion as compared to other areas of the subtropics and also the equator. So this image is showing that over the equator it tends to have more rainfall as compared to other areas. It is correct, it is a, a possible it's what you would expect. So another concept that we need to know is that over the western side of the continent we have what we call upwelling. So we have the wind which is driven offshore from land to the sea, which moves uh, the, the, the ocean water away from the land mass, creating space for the underwater to upwell, to replace the wind-driven water away from the land. So it is expected that this water has more nutrients, it's much more cold, that is why uh, the water of the western side of the is cold, it is due to upwelling. And then another point, or another concept is that the subtropical and the cyclones. When we look at the image on my left, which is summer, we tend to see that the ITCZ, which is the intertropical convergence zone, tends to migrate southwards. And then in winter, the ITCZ, which is the intertropical convergence zone, tends to migrate northward. So that is why in winter we expect to see cold fronts passing over the interior of Southern Africa. But then in summer, it's another case, it's the opposite case, because the ITC that migrate south and then also the cold fronts do not pass over the interior. Another concept that we need to understand is the SOR, which is the Southern Oscillation Index. This is the measurement of the mean sea level gradient between Tahiti and Darwin. In Darwin. So we subtract the mean sea level pressure from Tahiti with the mean sea level pressure from Darwin, and we get an index. So as you can see, this is an example of uh, the SOI from the years 1960. To 2012. So when you have an index which is below minus one, you expect to have an L mean. And then when you have an index which is above one, you expect a La mean over the Pacific Ocean. The SOI measures the end conditions, which is the L minus one oscillation over the past Pacific Ocean distance. It is a measurement of the mean sea level pressure between Tahiti and also Darwin to measure the Enzo index over the Pacific Ocean. So during an um, we experience we, we expect to have high pressure in the eastern Pacific, which weakens and then we have westerlies over the Indian Ocean. So this is a telecommunication. Whatever happens in the Pacific Ocean influence the time. Of, of circulation over the Indian Ocean. So you have weaker trade winds, and one pool migrates into the eastwards, and then the demic line is deeper in the eastern and western Pacific. And you have downwelling, lower biological productivity, coral, particular sensitive to warm sea water. So the difference between La Nina is that you have increased pressure, different across the equatorial Pacific. You have easterlies over the Indian Ocean. So this telecommunication happens at the what happens in the Pacific Ocean communicates with the current conditions 
to occur over the Indian Ocean. So we expect strong trade winds, strong upwind in the Indian Pacific, shallow temperature, and clearly known as sea water, higher biological productivity as compared to El Nino conditions. So this is a description of the Pacific Ocean, as you can see on my left, a Nani condition, and on my right, an El Nino condition over the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so now we need to understand that the oceans influence the type of weather that we find over Southern Africa, the temperature that we experience over Southern Africa, the rainfall that you experience over Southern Africa. On the east, rainfall is mainly summer, coastal summer, and then on the west, it's mainly in winter. And then we also need to understand that Southern Africa is the agricultural basket, so the type of, 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 of crops that grow within a certain period at a certain time depends on the type of weather that we experience, and mainly we experience that agriculture produces a, 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 lot of, a lot of support for the economy, a lot of support for the people of the Southern African region. And then the type of weather that we have helps with aviation. That is why we have experienced a breakage in terms of flying and and, 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 and etc. Et and then it also influenced the type of biodiversity, the numerous the variety of biodiversity that we have in Southern Africa. And also it has managed to make Southern Africa a tourist attraction, a region whereby tourism takes place and it's part of the economic development of the region. And then it has mainly enable the region of Southern Africa to be based on research and not on, 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 on other uh, uh, means such as the economy, such as uh, uh, mining, but then it has enabled us to, to, to be able to go and research and understand what happens. Why is the eastern side warm? Why is the western side of the ocean colder compared to the western side? So, it has enabled, it has enriched our research as South Africans. So in conclusion, the ocean, the oceans, we need to understand that the ocean circulates uh, 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 faster as compared, I mean, the ocean circulates much more slowly as compared to the atmosphere. It's just that uh, then there's this relationship and then the ocean circulation very significantly, especially in temporary, especially in um, place to place, and temporary meaning from time to time. There are two parts of the ocean circulation. We have the wind driven circulation that dominates the upper 300 meters, and then we have the vertical driven circulation that dominates below. And then there's this interaction between the atmosphere and the ocean that also influences the type of weather we have. And the definition again of the ocean is that it is a very large expanse of sea, in particular, each of the main areas into which the sea is divided. Geographically, on that note, I hope you enjoyed my study and now you understand what ocean circulation is. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.